Step two in our five steps of hypothesis testing is to select a null and alternative hypothesis. We've been following an example with baby weight, and we discovered a sample mean that is higher than the world population average. And so you might think we'd want to test the hypothesis that this sample mean is larger than the population mean. But that, in fact, is not what we're going to test. We do not test the hypothesis that we would like to prove true, that Siberian babies weigh more than the world average. We will start with a hypothesis that can be demonstrated to be false. It is a falsifiable hypothesis. Remember, this doesn't mean that our hypothesis is false. It means that if it was false, we would be able to measure it. The falsifiable hypothesis that we would use is that Siberian baby weight is the same as the world average, that those weights from the sample and the population are not different. A hypothesis of no difference is called a null hypothesis and it is based upon the assumption that a sample mean should be the same as the population mean from which that sample was drawn. Let's start with the null hypothesis. The null hypothesis states that there is no difference between an experimental mean and the control mean, or that there is no difference between a sample mean and the population mean. Here are some examples of how we might word a null hypothesis and look for the no difference within each of these examples. There will be no difference between the scores of the deaf rats and the hearing rats. It's easy to spot. It says no difference right there in the hypothesis. Scores this year will be the same as scores from last year. Saying that two things are the same is saying that they are not different. The men's scores will be no different than the women's scores. In each of these examples, you can see this hypothesis is clearly stating that there is no difference between the sample mean and the population mean. Let's apply this with our baby weight example. The way that we would word a null hypothesis would be the average weight of babies born in Siberia will be no different than the world average of 7.5 pounds. We could also express this in numbers. The null hypothesis is always written as H sub zero colon. In this case, mu equals 7.5. We would read that as this sample from Siberia is drawn from a population that has an average of 7.5. Another way in which you will see a null hypothesis written is H sub zero colon mu one equals mu two. When we are comparing two samples, we might say that each sample is drawn from a population whose means are equal. Remembering that when two numbers are equal, they are not different. Our null hypothesis is our testing hypothesis. That is what we're going to be examining with our statistical test. But we will also specify an alternative hypothesis, the hypothesis that we would accept if we can demonstrate that the null hypothesis is most likely false. An alternative hypothesis is that the experimental sample will be different than the population. Here are ways in which we might write an alternative hypothesis. The deaf rats will have a better sense of smell than the hearing rats. We're indicating a direction of change. The drunk people will make fewer driving mistakes than the cell phone users. Again, indicating a direction. The number of lightning strikes on golfers will be different than the number of strikes on swimmers. In this case, indicating a difference without indicating a direction of change. What would the alternative hypothesis look like for our baby weight example? As I show you how we would word this hypothesis, pay attention to how closely it matches our null hypothesis. There is only one tiny difference between the two. 
we would express our alternative hypothesis in words. The average weight of babies born in Siberia will be different than the world average of 7.5 pounds. When we express our alternative hypothesis in numbers, we would write h sub 1 colon mu does not equal 7.5. This sample is drawn from a population that does not have a mean of 7.5. The null hypothesis is always going to be written as h sub 0 colon. The alternative hypothesis will typically be written as h sub 1 colon. However, you will see alternative hypotheses written as h sub a colon. This sub a standing for alternative hypothesis. Either one of these are legitimate ways of writing your alternative hypothesis. I am going to use the convention of h sub 1. Why do I do that? That way, if I have a second alternative hypothesis, I could follow with h sub 2 colon. I just think it's cleaner and easier to phrase it in that manner. So that's why you'll see me using that particular notation. Let's apply what we know about null and alternative hypotheses to our baby weight example. We could write our null hypothesis, h sub 0 colon mu equals 7.5. We are specifying that the average weight of babies born in Siberia will be no different than the world average of 7.5 pounds. For an alternative hypothesis, we could write h sub 1 colon mu does not equal 7.5, that the average weight of babies born in Siberia will be different than the world average of 7.5 pounds. We are looking for statistically significant differences. But what do we mean by statistically significant? We have to place our bets before the horses run. We have to specify before we begin testing exactly what criteria we are looking for to establish statistical significance. And we're going to do that in step three of hypothesis testing.